Angela. Angela, fa presto, you know, the people are coming. Ah, sì, ma... eh, e tu, mi raccomando, eh, help your mama and don't talk too much. This is Mario's place. I can't get used to buying merchandise in farms. Here they take the time to create novel ideas. Now remember, we see his hand eggs and then we scoot right back to town. We'll do our best, signorina. Only these people, you don't hurry. Buongiorno, Mario. Come on, benvenuto. Ah, che piacere. Ho saluto la vostra lettera e tutto è pronto. No, scusate. This is signorina Laura Lee, the fashion manici. You are just in time for lunch. With pleasure. Venite, venite avanti, amici, accolatevi. This is my wife, my daughter, and this is my son. Uh, Angela, porta da mangiare. Eh, tu Giacomo, pensi da bere, dammi del vino. Allora, buon appetito, eh? Grazie. Ah, ecco che arriva. Ah, pollo alla cazzo. Grazie. Qua, pezzo di pollo. Ah, no, no, eh, un altro pezzo. Venga qua, il suo adesso. Grazie. Ah, sì. Tutto qui facciamo noi, i polli li cresciamo noi. Signor Carlo, come le piace il pollo? Mm. Buono? Mm. Benissimo. Questa quando, quando la mia Angela cucina. Mm. Ah, little bit more, little bit more. Delicious, delicious, delicious. <ride> Lei? Sì? In compagnia della signorina deve venire qui più sovente. Eh, grazie. Eh, fate molto onore al cuoco. Eh, grazie. Ah. Il cibo è eccellente. Sì. Eh. Angela. È davvero brava. Insomma, parliamo lo stesso. Beh, la salute. Eh, salute. Salute, mamma. Mangia, mangia. Oh, really? Seven courses. But it was good. Good? La signorina, it was eccellente. You know, a few weeks of my Angela's good cooking, and we make you a splot of the chicken. I've no doubt. Now then, signor. Now then, signorina, you must see my rose garden. Please, come with me. Please, signorina. Vede, signorina? Queste qui sono rose garibaldine, color rosso sacro. Guardi. Oh, Questa è per lei. And now, signorina, what can I do for you? Huh? Oh, well, I... We would like well, to see some of these straw hand yes. rides. Oh, of course. I'll show it to you. Ecco, signorina, i capelli e le borsette. Oh. I like it. Uh, this is my newest one. Oh, I love this one like I love my two bambini. Yes, it is nice. Uh, what would you think, though, if it had a little more color? Perhaps a, a three-dimensional design, so? Si, 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 I think I have. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Like this? Perfect. Oh, maybe you could put on a little more embroidery, too. How about it had too much with, with the same design? You women in the United States will love it. Wonderful. Yes, yes, I think I have a hat, a perfect hat that we can fix to match. Here. How much would the set cost this way, by the dozen? <sighs> the same, I think. Mm -hmm. How about a thousand dozen? Quante? A thousand dozen. And I'd want an exclusive, of course. It's for our large American department store system. Mamma mia, of course, of course. Uh, exclusive. For a thousand dozen. Why, my cost? I can cut the price in half. Yes, I know the customers will like this. Beautiful. I can just see it. Accessory to Capri pants. An ensemble for fun in the sun. And the exclusive straw handbag for a conversation piece. Thank you, Betty Jean. Now comes Marjorie, wearing our adaptation of the Balenciaga original. It's made in a luxurious monotone tweed. And it's completely reversible. 
The original coat cost $1,250, plus duty. Our adaptation sells for under $70. Can't tell it from the original. Proving again that high fashion doesn't have to be high price. Pretty perky, isn't it? But when can you buy those things? Why, right now. Why? I know why Alex asked that question. Let me turn off the speaker. It was nice of the store manager to let us use this mezzanine office for this marketing class field trip. Are there any questions so far? Well, Professor, I didn't know before that uh, stores like this send fashion buyers to Paris, Rome, and all those places. Oh, yes. And they buy the originals, too. They just don't take notes on them. They take them apart. They study every line and translate them perfectly to American taste. Of course, no single store, no matter how large, can know as much about the desires of American women as one that is located in a thousand communities in all parts of the United States. Or Italian, or what have But a lot less cost to buy the same thing over there. But about Alex's question, don't you have style shows in Russia, Alex? Oh, of course we do all the time, at the Goom. The Goom? The Goom is the biggest apartment store in the world. I guess you're right at that, Alex. I know, I took some movies of it when I was in Moscow. Strictly amateur, of course. This king-size emporium was built as a showplace for the people. Its managers have the problem of trying to find enough to sell in it. They were having a style show that day. I had to use black and white film because of the dim light inside the store. But I got some interesting pictures. There are two kinds of clothes model. Work clothes, which a woman can buy anytime, and the more fancy dresses, which are not for sale now. They are what the Soviet women can look forward to in maybe five years if they work hard and the state achieves its industrial goals. That, no doubt, is why Alex asked when we could buy the gay new styles we just saw here. Yes, we've had to learn to do without our today needs. Sometimes I wonder. We don't have the nice things, but we don't have... When I look at your stores, you have everything. Acres and acres. And here, people are buying everything. Do you know what it is like in my country? People come to look like a museum. The whole center part is to walk through, full of catwalks and stairways, no elevators, merchandise in cubicles along the sides. Selections are small, prices are high. An ordinary woman's blouse costs 320 rubles. That's $32 in your money. Here today, I saw whole dresses for way less than that. A stylish coat for just $30. And your stores make shopping so much fun. Customers like to look for what they want and buy it. I can't get over it, how in America you take for granted you can buy anything. In our stores, it is not like that. You stand in line and buy a voucher first. A voucher? Why is that? Oh, the state operates the store. The clerks don't handle any money. Oh. By the time you get a voucher and stand in line, the goods may be gone. And no one ever knows when more will be in. Maybe next week, maybe a month. Since all clerks are paid by the state, they don't care whether the customer gets what he wants or not. That's an important difference. You're right, Alex. We Americans do take our ways for granted. How is it in your country, Vesu? In all Asian countries, most people steal barter, broke and get. There is much haggling. We can take that for granted. Oh, no. Pashuba, when I go to buy, I know the shopkeeper will ask far more than it is worth. So I offer far less. Then we haggle. That's how we buy. You see what he means? We just don't realize how business is done in other countries, or why we can shop the simple, pleasant way that we do. Now, there's several systems of marketing, but one is strictly American. It started around 90 years ago. What is that? It's the mail order catalog. We used to call it the wishing book. With all the big stores, do people still buy from catalog? Well, they still do in small towns, don't they, Professor? Oh, I'm reminded of what Will Rogers used to say. Most of us know enough. The only trouble is, half of what we know ain't so. Well, how do you mean? Well, maybe the quickest way to explain is to tell you a story. It may end up surprising all of you. The great Chicago fire of 1871 destroyed many things. It burned up one business before the business even got started. The young owner, a former traveling salesman for dry goods, lost everything but the clothes he had on and his idea. Yet almost before the last flames flickered out, he had found a new place and was starting over. There, too, was his best friend to dissuade him. You still going ahead with it? The idea is as good as ever. I know these farmers, George. 
It isn't fair. Because they're stuck in the mud out there, they can't buy the things city folks can. Crossroads stores can't afford to stock any but the most common items. And many have to charge big prices. I'm going to buy for cash and sell for cash. Just a little above cost. Uh, don't you see it, George? First, it can mean that anyone, anywhere, right in his own home, can buy anything that he wants for less than he'll pay anywhere else. For this new, larger market, manufacturers will be able to make more of the same goods for less. That can mean lower prices for everyone, in the cities, too. If we can sell more, more people will have more... Well, it's just catch to it. Only one? I know those people, too, how suspicious they can be, and with good reason. Let the buyer beware. That's the storekeeper's slogan. And sell by mail? Uh, they won't buy a pig in a poke. And I don't blame them. That's why I wrote this. Listen, this is going to be part of any catalog I ever print, any sale my company ever makes. We guarantee, if for any reason you are not completely satisfied with any article purchased from us, you may return it at our expense. What? Well, you can't do that. It Wait. We will exchange it for what you want or refund your money. And I'm going to sign it. You're crazy. You haven't left yourself any loopholes. I'm not looking for loopholes. I'm looking for customers. And the first thing I'm going to sell is satisfaction. If they don't get that, they get their money back. It'll never work. That was the beginning. The first mail order business, the first catalog, the first absolute guarantee. Even the customers thought Mr. Ward was crazy at first. A lot of them rushed to get in on it while it lasted. It's lasted pretty well. Yes, it has. And the mail order business is still growing. Except most of the customers live in the city now instead of the country. But they're still buying on the same guarantee. That's how the guarantee got started, huh? Yes. The guarantee is something else we take for granted today. Even in describing products. Look here. Every picture is clear. Every description is in short, simple words. It tells exactly what the item is and what it will do. In fact, I recommend this catalog to English classes as some of the best factual descriptive writing being done today. The customer knows exactly what he's going to get before he buys it. And to make sure that every article was exactly what the manufacturer said it was, Mr. Ward set up his own testing laboratory, the first in merchandising. Today, the company has quality control labs around the country to test all kinds of carpets and so forth. Will portable TVs really stand the gaff? How long will the two-way stretch, stretch, and still recover? How much hard usage will a Davenport and cushions really take? Anyway, they know how well it will do and what it's supposed to do. Every product must live up to every claim if its manufacturer wants to do business with this retailer. How do manufacturers like that? They like it. It sparks enthusiasm for them to make their product better than anyone else's. <laughs> There's a fine relationship between the company and its suppliers, especially the many small manufacturers. American products, made by the same kind of people you've seen buying them today, are the best values on earth. And while a company does buy certain specialty items in foreign markets, the great bulk of their goods are made by concerns big and little, thousands of them all over the country. In fact, one out of every eight American workers works for a company that makes or handles the merchandise that is sold through this nationwide store system. But let's get back to the marketing systems. One is when a manufacturer sells his product through a great many small stores or dealers. Another is when a manufacturer ever could get a national market for their product. And not so many people would be able to enjoy them. And I suppose because so many people buy them, they all can buy them for less. You're right, of course, all of you. And it wasn't many years before this new mail order firm became the largest patron the post office department had. But life is easier for rural customers to get into town. And because this company is the kind of a company it is, and because it operates in the kind of country this is, with our competitive system, as the needs of the public changed, 
the company changed its way of doing business to meet them. It started opening retail stores, bigger and bigger ones. And in town after town, people who had bought by mail order swarmed in to buy from the company in person, often more people than the town's total population. These new stores give the company's management something else it likes. A chance for employees to become active members of each local community. Help with schools, churches, civic betterment. What would you say are the chances for people like us? Well, to get a job with a store system like this. Well, first, you're at a good age. Students with most any kind of academic major find a variety of opportunities. The retail employee, best known to most of us, is the person behind the counter. But back of the salesperson and the department heads are the buyers. Hundreds of men and all experts in their lines of merchandise. They also aid the design of a product. Closely with suppliers and develop new sources and new products. They are on a constant worldwide search for new and different products they think customers will like. There are the service people, such as auto experts, who take care of your auto needs. Specialists and mechanics of all kinds because the company services anything it sells. There are the warehousing and construction people, the real estate and traffic experts, to mention a few. There are the retail display folks, and the sales promotion people who prepare the newspaper ads and the catalogs. There's a catalog department in every retail store. and in small communities, a special catalog store. A catalog store? You mean people go into a store to order from a catalog? Oh, yes. Because no single department store, no matter how big, can begin to stock the number and variety of items available through a catalog. In addition to the modern items, where else could a man go for, say, a carburetor or tires for a 25-year-old Ford or Chevrolet? There he could find them. He could? Oh, yes. And you can even use the phone to buy from a catalog. I know one city alone where they sell several million dollars a year, just over the phone. Well, I, had, I had no idea. Well, I told you, you might be surprised. Whatever way people want to buy, that's the way to sell. And that's the way Mr. Ward said he would always sell. When we were a rural nation, the mail order business was a godsend. When people started leaving the farms and moving to the towns, the retail stores were at it. Now here's a new cycle. City folks are moving back out to the suburbs. Great new shopping centers are springing up on the edge of town, with acres of free parking space to serve these families of young moderns. It also made news when this great company that had been founded on the principle buy for cash and sell for cash began to let customers buy on credit. Now this was another example of changing with the times, of constantly meeting its customers on the level of their needs at the time. I was just thinking. Yes, Miss Sue. Just keeping so many stores supplied with the right number and kinds of items must be a big job. Big? I'd say it was impossible. Except that they have one of the fastest distribution systems in the world. They have centers in the strategic parts of the United States. Now, not that there's anything new in this, but what is new is their electronically controlled perpetual inventory. Take Allen Park, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. This distribution center serves 120-some stores in just this area here. Not more than overnight away from any of them. But the heart of the setup is the electronic machine with the memory. It can give instant answers on the number, size, style, and color of as many as five million different items. Now, this is the first time that such an electronic machine has been used this way. And this means faster service for the customers. Hey, you know, my roommate graduates this year as a systems engineer. You might get a good job with them. It's worth investigating. Many thousands have found it a good place to work because this company has never permitted its size to overshadow the importance of the individual, whether he's an employee or a customer. Every store manager's policy is to run the friendliest store in town. And if this spirit is to reach the customer, then it has to begin with the employees. They like the chance to build a career, to share in the success of a growing company. They like what we call job stability, not like the periodic layoffs that are common in many industries. And you would think that among hundreds and thousands of sales every day, that the individual customer would get lost in the shuffle. Oh, here it is. 
The store manager showed me this letter, and I asked for permission to read it to you. You see, every so often, the manager will check over the sales slips to find out who hasn't been in for quite a while. Then he will write these customers a letter, telling them that they've been missed. Most of them come back in, sometimes carrying the letter with them. But this one happened to write. It's from a Mrs. Matilda Harkins. Dear sir, I haven't been in because I am now past 90, living alone and my wants are few. It's a funny thing, but your letter is almost word for word the same as I received from Mr. Ward many, many years ago. We were living in western Kansas then. I wrote Mr. Ward back and told him why we hadn't ordered lately. I told him we were expecting an arrival in the family and were saving our few pennies for that event. About 10 days later, the freight agent sent word he had a shipment for us. We told him we hadn't ordered anything. My husband went to the depot to straighten it out. But it was for us. A baby buggy and a complete outfit for the baby from Mr. Ward. And a letter asking us to please accept this gift. P.S. The baby was a boy. We named him after Mr. Ward. Yours sincerely, Matilda Hawkins. Oh, that's sweet. And believe me, this is only one of thousands of stories of the close personal relationship between this company and many of its customers through the years. Store's closing. Oh, I love a day like this. There is so much to learn about the American business. Well, my dear, how from one man can grow an institution that's so, well, so fabulous. So big and yet to me so personal. Yes, big enough to get a customer anything he wants. Still small enough to want to. Well put. Because of one man whose idea revolutionized retailing and all the others who are carrying forward his pioneering spirit. The institution he founded continues to grow and to expand. I can now say to each of us, to you and you,